I had told you that in the uh, aftermath of this Supreme Court oral arguments on Tuesday about 303 LLC, a woman who wanted to say, look, I I just don't want to use my creative services. I don't want to use my creative services for a same sex marriage. Is that legal? Should it be legal? She brought the suit, actually. This wasn't like she was sued by activists. And it was heard by the Supreme Court. Now, part of this, I think, is just understanding where all of this is going. And you can get a sense of it from the left wing justices, Sotomayor um, and uh, Jackson, Justices Jackson and Sotomayor, respectively. But when you dive into where this is all going, what you see is there will be no carve out for religious freedom. In the version of America that the left wants, your religion will comply with the dictates of the left wing social agenda on all matters. It'll start with same sex marriage, but it will go beyond that. Uh, the trans agenda, you know, all of it, right? Uh, transgender. The, the left will not be happy until there are drag queen story hours happening in Christian churches on pain of lawsuit. That's the truth. Meaning if, if you're not willing to do it, if you're, if you're a Catholic church or a Protestant church, you're not willing to have it, you're, you're going to get sued. And I know that may sound right now, oh, they always tell you that's not going to happen. That's radical. Well, let's think about the that's not going to happen approach for a moment here. Five years ago, probably, ten years ago, certainly, if you had said, oh, but they won't actually allow biological males to compete against women in college athletics. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to do that, right? No, no, they say we won't do that. That'll never happen. That will never be the case. And now, sure enough, we know where we are. You won't allow, right? You're, Ten years ago, hey, you're not going to allow biological males to be in female prisons, right? That's not, oh, no, we would, ne we would never do that. Sure enough, here we are. Slopes are slippery. People always say that the slippery slope is a fallacy. They don't have much of an understanding of history or momentum or reality. Slopes are, in fact, a trajectory. They are slippery. They do go in a certain direction. And what we saw in the aftermath, I think, of the oral argument Supreme Court is what the real game plan is here. There is currently a, a little, a, a, a tiny area of carve out within the law on uh, specifically in the aftermath of uh, Obergefell on same sex marriage and where religious faith is protected. That will not that will not stand if the left if the Democrat Party gets its way. And if you want to get a sense as to what the future looks like, I bring you this story of what just happened to a Christian group in Richmond, Virginia. At the hands of the Metzger Bar and Butchery. I've been to Richmond in the past. Actually a great town. I think Richmond's a very underrated city. Uh, really beautiful. Really charming. Actually has a lot of great food. Side note. Metzger Bar and Butchery canceled the reservation. Uh, a big group reservation of the Family Foundation. Which is a conservative Christian group. It was canceled 90 minutes before they were scheduled to sit down and eat. Now, this is uh, Top Chef star Brittany Anderson co-owns this restaurant. I haven't seen Top Chef in a, in a while. I watched the first season of it many, many years ago. But what we know is that it was canceled. It was canceled at the last minute. And what they've said, and this is always, this is always how it goes, right, is when they found out that it was a conservative group, um, they here you go. Here's the official statement. Metzger Bar and Butchery has always prided itself on being an inclusive environment for people to dine in. In eight years of service, we have very, very rarely refused service to anyone who wished to dine with us. Recently, we refused service to a group that had booked an event with us after the owners of Metzger found out it was a group of donors to a political organization that seeks to deprive women and LGB, LGBTQ plus persons of their basic human rights in Virginia. 
We have always resu- res- uh, refused service to anyone for making our staff uncomfortable or unsafe. And this was the driving force behind our decision. Notice how they always claim victimhood status. This is a very aggressive thing to do. And why did they do it? Why did this restaurant, Metzger Bar and Butchery, pull this reservation at the last minute? And obviously hum- meant to humiliate this group and as well as inconvenience them. It's because they don't like them. They can say it's because, oh, it makes me uncomfortable, tries to create a victimhood status. It's they don't like this group because of what this group now believes. I would note that the inclusion of depriving women of rights. So now, unless you are a pro-abortion zealot, you can be denied. You can be denied the right to eat in a restaurant. And under our current law, this is all just fine. You see where this is going? There, there's a there's a one way war in so much of this, a battle, if you will, the battlefield of ideas where the discrimination against conservatives, notably in Christians, but people of religious faith is able to happen uh, in a way that is never going to have the same kinds of consequences is never going to have the same kind of consequences as the protected groups. And as you've noticed, the protected groups are expanding and expanding all the time to include now not immutable, not uh, to include way beyond immutable characteristics to characteristics of sexuality, lifestyle, intersectionality, all of these things. So th- there can be discrimination against you based upon your opinion on these matters. So public accommodation law. Now, it doesn't seem to do anything if you're a Christian group that wants to go to, obviously, a public accommodation, a restaurant. This is really going to the basis of or the the earliest days of public accommodation. You can be discriminated against because they say you're a bigot, but that's okay. Meanwhile, the left keeps adding and adding all of these different groups to the protected roster in law to create a special category of law where you must bend the knee or else. I just talked to you about this yesterday. I said they're not going to they're not going to stop until your church. And now maybe it doesn't go this far. Maybe we're able to actually defend religious liberty in this country. But the goal here is to eventually make all religious institutions effectively organs of the state. And I mean, the uniparty state, the Democrat left authoritarian state that will make all determinations about social policy, family policy, everything. That's the ultimate goal. I think it's pretty obvious at this point. I think we see this with some degree of of clarity based on what's happening and how slippery the slope has been in just the last 10 years. But just understand this. Now I have to say, so I'm in the same position, right? You're in the same position just as a conservative. You could think that you're, oh, you're making a, you're making um, a, a big, reservation at, at a wedding hall let's say be you know for for your daughter's wedding oh but you're you're a christian conservative who's a who doesn't support abortion you you don't support abortion sorry we're gonna pull your reservation at the last minute notice how wokeness has and the left-wing mindset has no outer limits to what they're willing to do and the kinds of ways that they they want to cut you off from banking services they want to de-internet you kick you off of social media platforms they want to humiliate you and prevent you from using public accommodations and and there's no protection for our side somehow meaning just conservatives meaning people of faith no 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 now i understand there's some of those protections are in place right now but they don't have the same teeth you're not going to get the same kinds of legal outcomes And they're being eroded all the time. And if we don't understand what the other side is trying to accomplish, what the left seeks to do here, we're never going to be able to meet them and defeat them on the political battlefield. Because how can you have the right strategy when you don't even know what the other side's strategy is? Their strategy here is to make it so that you your your faith your your tradition anything you say about well this is what's in the bible or this is what my faith tradition is if it conflicts with the left wing social agenda too bad the state will shut you down the state will take your money the state will condemn your building and and maybe even you know lock you up i mean that's what they want and i do think everybody should at least understand that that is the goal 
That is what these activists want. They are not a, this is not a live and let live approach. It is just the incrementalism of the eradication of religious freedom and individual freedom, freedom of conscience. You don't even have to be religious. I, I think there's a very strong case to be made, for example, that opposition to abortion is just rooted in basic morality of don't kill babies. Now, a lot of religious people obviously agree with that, but you don't have to be a religious person to understand why abortion is wrong and evil. But if you're opposed to abortion now, you're allowed to be kicked out of a restaurant. Oh, okay. So these are the rules of the game. Do we think that's going to be a healthy society going forward? Do we think that that's going to result in the kind of basic unity and and agreement and buy-in that we need for this country to function the way that it should? I don't think so, my friends.